I know this is a lot of work that Black Voters Matter does on the local level. Can you talk a little bit about how you engage people at the local level and how we can get more people involved in the electoral process? You know, I actually think that that's the starting point. What's interesting is that, you know, the national media, because it's a national media, cares more about national elections or federal elections. But the truth of the matter is people care about local elections. Community folks that we run into actually care more about local elections when they're informed about it or, or, or the issues that they care about really can be more impacted on the local level, not necessarily the federal level. And so a case in point, you know, I remember in, in I think it was 2020, when we were in Florida, we were in Florida and it was a, a gubernatorial race. And we were in the panhandle we were, uh, talking about this governor's race that was coming up. That was this hot contested race. That was a race um, with DeSantis and um, uh, uh, um, Andrew Gillum. Gillum. Andrew yep. Gillum. It was 2018. Uh, it was 2018. 2018 race. And we had a packed room. And we were talking about the governor's race with the energy. Uh, Cliff and I have this sense of feeling the energy. The energy in the room wasn't really, the people weren't excited. It wasn't a lot of energy in the room and then they started talking a, a person mentioned jumped up and they mentioned something about this school board seat this simple school board seat that was in the area and then we kept and then folks kept talking and then it came up for the second time and then when the second time it came he stopped the meeting and said wait 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 it seems like the energy in the room is around this local race. Tell us about this local race. And as they begin to tell us about the local race, the entire energy in the room shifted. It was about this school board seat, this one school board seat in the district there. It changed the entire dynamics. Well, it has been our experience is that part of what happens is that local candidates don't have the kind of war chest or the kind of resources that large larger candidates have. So oftentimes they're unable to do the outreach, but when you really tap into the energy and really around the issues that people care about and you can connect them to what a school board member does or understanding what a county commissioner or what power does a PA have, what you find is that people are actually more concerned about those issues and can become more engaged if they're invested in. And so over the last six years, six and a half years, we have intentionally put our investment on the local level in these local races that while everybody else is gone, focusing on all these every four years, we don't have four-year cycles. We don't have off years. We don't have off cycles. We're working 365 days out of the year. We work in the small races. You know, oftentimes what we've seen is we've seen where actually the bottom ticket can drive the top of the ticket. There's this idea that the top of the ticket actually uh, impacts the bottom of the ticket, and it can in certain circumstances. But we've actually seen where there has been folks, literally, uh, you've seen an undercount at the top of the ticket, depending on if that candidate has an investment. And so I think it's been kind of three strategies that we've used, particularly around um, the work that we do locally. One is um, the three M strategy. We use money that we've invested money on the ground directly to groups. Most of the groups that we um, we give an investment to from 10,000 to 15,000, it can pay for vans, it can pay for information, it can pay for a texting campaign. But what we do is we invest in local communities because they're on the front line. The second thing is really about the supporting movement infrastructure that oftentimes we actually support the coalition so that there's almost like a coordinated campaign that they're working together and decide on what's important for them. And then the third thing is simply really about message that oftentimes these, these, these areas, that it's not just about candidate centered, it can be very issue, um, issue oriented, but those groups don't have the kind of resources to get that information out. So we support them in doing that. And so that's the way that we've approached local politics and it's actually helped us in local election. It's helped us build our infrastructure. That every state that we're in, we have anything from 20 to some places like Georgia, 80 um, organizations that we're working with ongoing. Because the truth of the matter is when elections are gone and people are going back to their home state, the folks in those local rates, those local areas, they're the people that are there. And so it is really important that we're empowering local communities. And that's our first line of defense. Our first line of defense is not national. We're national in scope because geographically that's our footprint. But our strategy has always been to actually strengthen the base of local organizations that are frontline groups doing the work. 